Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade repair video for you this evening. This is one that we get questions on all the time, so I figured I would show you how we do it. So this is a clean sweep plush crane, right? There's a bunch of different sizes, but one of the things that a clean sweep plush crane has is up at the top, it has these little light bulbs all around the top that make this marquee blink and do its thing and a lot of times those have stopped working like on this one so we got this one in and we're just getting ready to fix it and so i figured i would show you a little video of how you can make yours do their thing again because hell we gotta save them people we gotta get all of these uh from the 80s like this uh in operable condition before everybody throws them all away this is a pretty big one actually well, what's that maybe a 36 inch or a 40 inch probably a 40 inch 40 inch wide or 42 inch so the the um, our marquee infinity lights let's call them that our infinity marquee lights are not working so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take this front glass off so we can look up in the top and see uh, what's going on so as you can see we've been pulling out some of the bulbs and many of them are blown the filament is blown inside of them if you look real close on the bulb, it actually says on this one, Taiwan, and it says S-I-V-A-L, Sylvania, I believe, or that may not mean that, I don't know, 10 watt, 130 volt. So 10 watts is the brightness, 130 volts is how much voltage it takes to, to light if it up. If you replace your bulbs, which we've done on some of these at least, and they don't come on, uh, you're going to have to look at the actual board that runs everything. So inside the cabinet, up on the roof of it, is a little board. And it's like this on most of the clean sweeps. Let me see if I can get it to... All right, see that board there? And so the way it works is, see those four little... We're going to pull it out here in a minute where we can see it better. But um, see these four little transistors here? Or they're SCRs, I believe. They switch the lights on and off. And if you look, the power is coming in here and plugging into these last two little blades. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to check to see if we're getting 120 volts on that, like we should with a multimeter. So we'll check and make sure that we're getting our, our voltage up to the top. We should be because, as you can see, one of those fluorescent lights on the top is on. Um, but I'll check just to make sure. Okay, folks, so I checked and we are getting 120 volts up to it. So if, if this is, it's important that you put the wires back the way that they go. Now, I'm assuming that this is the original position. So I've got this on tape. I can go back and look at it later. But basically, the black and the white wires, that one white wire is really faded, but that is the black and the white wires are sending 120 volts up to the left two spades. And then the next one is a white wire and then a blue wire and then a red wire and then a black wire and then a yellow wire. Now all of these wires head over this way. Boy, you're upside down now, that's interesting. <laughs> head over that way. I just noticed my finger was in the thing. Head over that way where they basically run the, uh, the bulbs on the front. So they've got them in, uh, like the, the yellow wire maybe is running this one and then the fifth one and then the, the ninth one. So it's, there are four or five um, in a row that each one of those little transistors controls. So since I am getting power to the board and none of the lights are coming on after we replace several of them, uh, I'm going to pull that little board out and uh, we'll look at it. But you have to make sure you know where the wires go so you can put them back on. So I just filmed it. So if yours has been unplugged, if you plug them back in the way I just showed it, you'll probably be all right. So here is our special little board. You can see I pulled a couple of the wires loose whenever I was pulling it out of the cabinet. That's all right, I can put those back on. So the way this works is, these are our two pins that the power comes in on, right? Now if you look, it, I'm no electrician, and I'm, I mean I'm no, uh, let me just say I'm no expert on any of this stuff. But if you look carefully at how this is done, so the, pop, the, the black wire came in on this one, that's the hot, and then this is the neutral. So the neutral, if you see, 
just connects right back out to this wire. So basically that wire is going to go to each socket on the top. So if you plug that wire in over here, it wouldn't work. So we're going to have to check to make sure all of that's wired right, right? So the, the power comes in here, the neutral comes in here, but it also goes right back out on this wire, right? But then both of them go across and they go over to here and here, right? Which is this big transformer. This thing gets loose all the time. I've had a bunch of these with bad solder on it because they get really hot. Um, I'm definitely going to check it. I don't, I don't see any like definite bad solder. It's hard to do it with it while I'm holding the camera, but, um, but then they, so it goes through the transformer, and so it's AC voltage, right? So then after it goes out of the transformer which I guess would be, yeah, okay, so you're, the, both your power lines go here, and then they come out the transformer on this side, right? So then they go through these little diodes to turn it into DC power. There's a cap here, I guess it was just like a filter cap. And then these two chips, let's see what they are. It says HCF4040BE, and then this one is a DM74S287N. These two chips are the ones that basically make the 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 attract mode the lights move. So it's basically turning on, it's sending a signal out to turn on these transistors one at a time in a row. I don't know how it works, I don't know how they do it, but that's basically what's happening. Right? So it takes the power, the DC power to to work the the um, the two things to turn them on and off. Now I believe, let me see if there's a way that the, the voltage also gets over to the, there's got to be some way that the AC voltage also gets to the, to these chips here. So, bum, bum, bum. yes. All right, so look here. So when the hot comes in, it connects to this spade, which runs over to the transformer, but it also comes around here, and then you see it one, two, three, four times goes up to the one, two, three, four chips, these little transistors. So do you understand what's going on here? The hot's coming in, the neutral's coming in, and then going right back out to the sockets. And then the hot is coming in, and it's going to all four of these transistors on one of the legs of the transistors, right? And then it's also the hot and the neutral are running over this transformer, turning into DC and running to these chips, right? Which are probably running off five volts or whatever these chips run off of. These chips are then turning on and off, you know, these, which are turning on and off these transistors. So when it turns this transistor on with a signal from this, which is a signal from this, this transistor shorts together the one leg that has hot on it and the leg that's the output on, you know, here or whatever. So these chips are going on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, which is turning these on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off in a row, which is making all the lights light up, making them move, right? So if you don't have any lights on, it could be bad solder on the, on the transformer. It could be one of these chips is bad. Um, it could be bad solder anywhere. It could be that your your neutral that you have going out, you've got plugged into the wrong spot. So, you know, if like this is running to one of the sockets, and then you've got, uh, instead of neutral running to one of the sockets, you've got one of the other hots running to one of the sockets, and then you've got neutral running over here, well, none of the, none of the bulbs will work because it's wired wrong. So you had to get that just right. But it's very common for these SCRs to burn, slap the hell up, and not work. So they are, it says Q401, no, Q4010L5. So I'm going to look that up and we'll, uh, we'll see what those are uh, considered and blah, 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 blah. But it's very common for all of these to be bad. 
So either all of these are bad, or we've got the wires on the wrong connections. Um, you could have this voltage regulator is bad. This is 7805. So it's creating the five volts that's running these chips. So we, we just got to check through and see what, what's going on with it. And so uh, when I find out, <laughs> I'll let you know. I'm going to put the camera down and check the solder on the transformer, check these diodes to see if any of those are bad, uh, try to check the chips to see if I can tell with a just a simple diode check if they're bad, see if I can tell if the 7805 is bad, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, uh, I'll do a little work and come back and tell you what I find. Okay, folks, I think I figured something out. I'm going to show you so that you'll know what to do. I've had these before, and the problem was always bad solder on the transformer. Now, this thing's live. I've got juice running in it, right? So I made a little uh, cord with plugs on the end that I could plug, plug into the board. So if you check with the multimeter on the actual spades you see I've got 125 volts running to it right if you check up here on the top I'm trying to be very careful because it's live I've got 125 volts running to it let's check over here on the transformer Hundred twenty five volts. Okay, let's check coming out of the transformer. Ooh. I'm trying not to kill myself. There's a spot I can check. There's a spot I can check. You can see coming out of the transformer. I do not have any voltage. All right. So basically my transformer is not working. Which is like the worst possible problem because you can't order these transformers. Well you might be able to. I don't even know what voltage it's supposed to be making but whatever it is, it's not making it. So you can see how I'm having a little bit of trouble getting even my AC voltage to read on it. And there it is. But So what I'm going to do is, so basically the transformer is not outputting anything, so it's not making any of the chips work or any of the output work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully clean off all the solder that's on the transformer and also on these two connectors over here, and then re-solder it all together and then check it again just to make sure that it for sure that it's not a bad connection and I'm also going to check the transformer uh, to make sure that it's it seems like it isn't broken inside but I, I think I've got a transformer problem all right so I've got the power off to it and I'm messing around with this transformer so the way these transformers work is you send power in on the primary which is basically so the one side of the one the black wire goes here the white wire goes here and they're connected together through the wire. So there's a big wire inside that's all wound up, and that's called the primary, right? And so this wire is connected to this wire. It's just looped around the spool a whole bunch of times. So the little piece is missing at the top, so you can tell that. Okay. And then it transforms through some kind of magic <laughs> to the to the secondary. So this was the same deal. So this particular one has three posts on the secondary and so the it's a wire connected together inside that spool that's how that works so with that said if you take your multimeter and you set it on resistance ohms and again I'm no expert on this I'm just telling you what I'm seeing here so these are these is this is the uh, secondary right so we'll check between the middle and one of the outside um, windings of the secondary and if it'll cooperate you get 40 ohms right? and then if you do it through the middle and the other outside you get 37 ohms and so if you do it from the outside to the outside you get 80 ohms so 
there's 40 ohms resistance between these two there's 37 or so between these two and then there was 80 or so between these two right so this is the, the the primary so on the primary let's see what resistance we have between the two posts I'll just give you the spoiler no matter what I do it's not connected <laughs> so the, the primary is no longer connected so it's getting the voltage here but something's broke somewhere to where it can't do its thing so basically there's a wire broke inside the transformer now I can I might get lucky and it's there's a wire broke on the a bottom of it or something where I can see it where the little leg goes in or something so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take this transformer off the board to where we can look at it better and see if I can see something that's messed up. Okay, folks, so in my particular situation, this transformer is bad. If I, if I measure between these two, the primaries, it's not connected anymore. It's broke. And if I pull this out, the wires are still attached, but there's still no continuity. So somewhere in the middle of this whole transformer, there's a broke wire, um, which means this transformer is useless. With that said, I was able to look online, and with I googled that number, nothing came up. But with the measurements, I was able to figure out, and this is a PCB mount trans transformer, so with the measurements, I was able to figure out uh, a similar part and order one. It was like $16. So when it comes in, I'll show you the part number and all that. But until then, I'm going to show you a way you can rig it up. <laughs> so we're about to jerry-rig it. All right, so um, ordering the transformer, one thing I had to figure out was what size it is. So I'm guessing on this, but there's a little clue here. This is a 7805 um, voltage regulator, which is usually used to turn like 12 volts into 5 volts. And if you look, the output of it is going to these two chips, um, which like 5 volts. So... Um, I'm wondering if I've got this right. Hmm, I'm not going to second guess myself now. But so what I did was I ordered a 12 volt um, times two transformer. So it's 24 volt from there to there. Because the way they're doing it is this: they're using their center tap as the ground for the 7805, and then they're running one of the outputs to the 7805. So I think what they're doing is they're taking 12 volts and turning it into five to run those two chips. If I'm wrong, we'll find out whenever it comes in. But I believe we're going to be all right. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can rig it up where you don't even need the transformer. So if this entire board isn't working, what you can do is... My little wire popped loose. We're not live right now. So the hot comes in here, and the neutral comes in here. The neutral immediately goes back out to every socket on the white wire, right? And the hot goes around, and it goes to the side of the of this of these triacs, every all four of these triacs, right? And then the middle leg of the triac is the leg that goes back out to the sockets. So what you can do is if you put a... Now, I'm leaving the transformer off, which means that none of this stuff is getting powered right now, right? Because all of the power runs through the transformer. So in my case, it's real easy. But if you put a little glob of solder from the input, which is the 120, to the output, basically you just short-circuited the triac, and it'll make all the lights light up. They won't blink, but they'll light up. I don't know if I'd do that with your transformer and all this stuff trying to do its thing because it, the triac would be trying to turn itself on and off. I don't know, it might burn up other things on the board. But temporarily, I'm gonna do that um, until I get my transformer in. If I get my transformer in and it's not the right one, I'll just have to leave it permanently like that. But I, I think we're gonna be all right. But I'll put a little glob of solder on each one of those. We'll put it all back in, get all of our light bulbs working, and everything should be uh, up and running. And then we'll wait on our transformer to come in, and I'll we'll pull it back out after that. All right, so you can see why they call it an infinity mirror. Check that out. So it looks pretty good just with them on all the time, right? But it'd be cooler if they twinkled, right? <laughs> so you can see we have the board back in there. And you can see the um, the order of the wires, black and white, which are the AC, and then white, blue, red, black, yellow. 
um, and you can see that I have the transformer still off of it. I just put a little glob of solder on the SCRs to connect the input to the output. And I'm mean, not the SC. I keep calling them SCRs, which is silicon controlled rectifier or something like that. These are triax, 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 triax. Um, they're basically used to switch AC voltage, is my understanding. So. Um, so I just got the input shorted to the output. So basically the white is coming in and then going back out on the white to every socket and the black is coming in and then it's connected at the triac to the blue, red, black, and yellow wires. You could do the same thing if you didn't have the board by just connecting the white to the white and connecting the black wire to the blue, red, black, and yellow wire. By doing that, you would send 120 volts to each socket. So. I ordered that little transistor, I mean a little transformer, when it comes in we'll put it in and see if I guessed right on the voltage, I think I think I did, but um, if it ends up being the right one, you'll see these twinkling. So I got my transformer in, this is the old one that I broke, and this is my new one, which is the exact same size, looks like the pin spacing is exactly the same. Mm. I just noticed though it's got three legs on the one side. I might have to look into that. But I'm thinking that's a pretty good match. And I've got the little instructions. So I'm going to try to put it in the board. See if that works. Um, the part number is Hammond Manufacturing 161E24. And on the side it says, secondary is a 24 and 12 volt, primary is 115 volt. The, the whole thing with the secondary is the, um, it's center tap, so it's 12 between the middle and the outside on each side, or it's 24 between the two outside ones. So I think this is the right one for this board, but we're going to find out. Let's see what she does. I'll see if I can uh, put it in there. Okay, I think I got it. The transformer, the pinout was different. Like it didn't, on this one, these two on this one side were the 110, but on this one, one and two were the 110. So basically, I uh, had to drill another hole through the, through the uh, board, mount it upside down. I don't know if I should pick this up because it's on right now. We'll try it without getting killed. So basically I had to reroute all of the all of the traces on the bottom. But I got it all on there, blah 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 blah, how the old one was. Mounted the same, but I had to move all the wires so that it goes to different pins. And it came with a little piece of paper to show you how to wire it up. But uh, now whenever I check the AC voltage between the white, the neutral, and the other ones, I'm getting like 70, 80. 90 volts and it moves a little bit. I think it's doing that because it's I'm my my multimeter's picking up the lights flashing. So I think it's turning it on and off really quick, which is what they kind of do. So but we'll put it in and see if it actually beats it. That is really cool. It came out pretty good. I'll show you the uh, show you the transformer back up in there. Our replacement transformer. Check it out. I got it to work. It was eight dollars or something like that, and eight dollars shipping because that's all I needed. But they look a lot better with the uh, with the infinity lights. That's what made these things so special back in the day. This is what I always remember seeing at like the movie theater and stuff when I was a kid, teenager. Um, you'd go in and they always had, this was like in every single movie theater, arcade, any of that stuff. So there you go. Let us know what you think below. Give us a thumbs up for filming it all for you. Leave your comments below and make sure to subscribe to us if you don't already. YouTube is telling us that only 15% of the people that view our videos are actually subscribed to us. And that's got to stop, folks. 
So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. And we'll see you on the next video.